Hello, so today we're going to go over some of the basics of Mudbox. And uh, while this is loading up, Mudbox is essentially a digital sculpting program. Um, it's used mostly in video games and movies for characters, but it's also used for detailing architectural pieces, just adding an incredible layer of detail. And uh, the way it basically works is um, it works with polygons, which is what you're used to from Maya. And the general idea is that when you're actually creating a character, you can go in and add details all the way down to the pores if you want to add them, and we'll talk about that later. Right now, we just want to talk about the interface. And so this is just uh, something I'd sculpted out uh, using their base mesh, just adding some details, and um, we'll be doing stuff like this. But we need to learn how to navigate through it and what happens. So when I first open it, I get a screen like this. If I have previous files, they'll load into here. Um, and I'm just going to pick the human body. Now one thing to note is that if you forget, besides the shortcut, uh, keys that I gave you. There's some nice little quick tutorials, one minute tutorials on basic, basic, really basic navigation and stuff. They're literally like one minute each. This one's going to be a little bit longer than that. Um, but there's also more tutorials uh, through the community uh, right down here on the Mudbox community tab. For right now I'm just going to start with a base human body. And the first thing we need to know uh, before we get into the, the display and the interface is how to navigate. And One of the really cool things about Mudbox is that if you're just coming off of Maya it's very very user friendly and easy to get into because the controls are almost identical. So uh, on a PC it would be Alt, on a Mac it would be Option, left mouse button allows me to rotate around. Alt or Option middle mouse button allows me to pan up, down, left, right. And Alt or Option right mouse button allows me to zoom in. So using a combination left mouse, middle mouse, right mouse button um, allows me to just move the camera around. And you always have to think of this as that I'm not moving the object around and rotating it, I'm moving a camera around it. I'm a uh, free floating little camera, almost like a ghost that's just floating around. And that's how I can look around and see this object that's not actually moving, it's just standing there. So a little bit about the interface. Uh, typical with uh, most software like this, you have your primary menu uh, under file, how to save, export, import, um, basic edits, copy, you know, or duplicate, and we'll get into some of these extras, how to create base meshes if I want to actually add them into an existing scene, curves, more cameras for different reasons, materials, and we'll, we'll get into more detail of all of these. Um, mesh we'll talk about a lot when we start sculpting because these are going to be really important uh, because the way Mudbox works is to get that level of detail uh, you have to do subdividing which means making the model much more dense adding more polygons so we can actually sculpt literally sculpt in any details like wrinkles and pores uh, display we'll talk about. So all of these we'll kind of go into as we need to because if I go over every single one of them right now or most of them uh, you're going to get overloaded. So we just want to get up and running. Um, these tabs up here, the 3D view is the view that you are going to spend 99% of your time in. This is working directly on the model. Um, there's also orthographic views. For right now we'll worry about the, the 3D view. UVs, which are the coordinates for how textures lay out. So they're base meshes that you can start sculpting with. Uh, their UVs are already laid out. And that basically means that if I, if and when I start painting on this character, um, those textures aren't going to do, uh, if unless I radically change the model, uh, by default they're not going to do anything too weird. They're actually not going to stretch as much. 
the image browser, we have the capability of not only viewing images for resources, but also bringing images in that could be used for all sorts of things. They could be used for texturing, they could be used for sculpting. Uh, so a, a good example would be if I had an image that was, um, maybe it was black with little white dots, and then I painted it in then what would happen is I could use that to actually paint pores on the skin uh, and just get an immense amount of detail. And then there's the Mudbox community which is a good resource. Not only can you look and see what other people have done but you can also access um, files that they've created that you can download. They also have made tutorials. Um, some are more detailed than others and if you make something cool you can even toss it up there and get some feedback which is nice. Uh, but we'll be spending most of our time in the 3D view. Now as we go around, I'm going to kind of jump a little bit around here. Um, over to the right, well first we have uh, our little friend here which is similar to Maya where you can actually uh, go around and use this just to click around and look at the character. And This is really actually useful for when you get lost and you're like, oh, I want to go home back to the original, poop, right there. Also, if I really want to focus on the face, I can just go put my uh, brush or cursor over the face, press F, and then that zooms and uh, locks it right to the center. So now I can focus, get in there, and start working on the face. To the right, we have three tabs, layers, object list, and viewport filters. Uh, the layers, um, we have two variations. We have the sculpt and we have the paint. So uh, the sculpting layers are really nice because I can actually, if I, let's say I want to create this character as a zombie and I want to have two versions of him. I want to have, uh, you know, Joe Schmo before he got bitten by his uh, his neighborhood zombie and then we will add Joe after. I could actually detail him out as normal and unbitten and you know not falling apart and then I could sculpt in a brand new layer with all those grody details of you know skin missing and bones and you know holes in his shirt and all that kind of stuff and I literally could just turn them off and on which is really nice. Uh, painting layers work similar to Photoshop, so I can layer out all of those different layers and once again I can turn them off and on, I can blend them just like in Photoshop to get some really nice effects. The object list tells me everything that is in my scene and it's I can, anytime I highlight anything, a tool, you know, a brush tool, a stamp, an object, these uh, this little box here is where the properties go and I can modify those properties for any of the things that I've actually selected. So you can see as I click on it, it changes down here. And I can actually go in and change all sorts of stuff. So right now my default scene I have one light and I could actually tell it, hey, cast shadows. And you can see right under his, um, right under his chin you see it's casting a shadow now, whereas before it wasn't. And right now, you'll notice it changes, and that's because by default, the light is locked to the camera. And what that basically means is that any direction, if I were to, be a, to jump out of this camera and look behind him, we would see that it's, it's dark because the light is actually shining right next to my lens on him. So no matter what direction I look at, that's the direction the light is hitting him. And sometimes I want to turn that off. So if I actually just rotate a little bit like this and then say, don't lock to camera, now you'll see what I mean. I'll switch that back on. And what's funny is you'll notice that it's actually altered from the angle. So if I actually go back, now it's actually more accurate to that, see. Um, default material which is on him, and there's the human body that I'm going to start working with. 
The viewport filters are just different ways we can add depth of field and adjust that. We can add uh, different types of ambient occlusion and we'll talk about what ambient occlusion is. He's very low res and not very detailed so we can't really see what a lot of this is doing. Go back to layers. And that brings us to the bottom bar. And the bottom bar is basically your sculpting tools, which there are many. Painting tools, where when we, after we've star, completed this character, creature, whatever it is we're going to make, then we can go in and paint it and have all sorts of cool things, like so if he's wearing armor parts of him to be metallic and shiny, and other parts to be skin and try and fake lighting and how it's uh, illuminating the skin with subsurface scattering. And then we have uh, curve tools which we have the ability of drawing curves directly on the surface and using that as a guide for our brush because sometimes you want specific details and whether you're using a mouse or a tablet it becomes really difficult to actually get really precise nice clean lines and that's where uh, these guys can come in. These are also used for retopologizing and we'll talk more about that but the short of that is that if I press W you can see his wireframe and this is a generic wireframe but it does, may not have the best edge flow for the character that I want to create and we'll talk more about what that means later in detail but what it really the, the gist of it is that if I change this a lot to an alien that is not built like this human and I want to animate him later I want those lines to kind of go with the flow of the shape of the character or the creature and right now they are they may not be so I would use uh, I would draw curves and lines on him and um, I have an option to retopologize him in here now there's actually better ways of doing it like in Maya uh, that are more time-consuming but they actually give you much better results but that's something else that you could use that for the pose tools are for that quick and generic way that if I want to get this character to actually um, change his uh, change his position a little bit and literally go in and start to kind of tweak out. Now of course we could see there's some some serious issues there and we'll go over how to actually do it properly. I just Z out of control Z out of that or command Z if you're on a Mac um, just so that uh, he, he doesn't look like plastic man and then of course your select tools where you can select faces or the whole object and move it this is really important when you start bringing in accoutrements for our friend here like clothing that you modeled in Maya or swords or things like that and you want to position them so that you can do a cool render I'm just gonna hit W so I can turn that off and then we have the sculpting. Let me go back to the sculpting tools. And one thing to note is that um, just like Maya, oh my gosh, look at all of the different things that are in here. And um, people get intimidated because they think I have to rem remember the definition and what every single thing is. And that's not the case. Um, I've been working in the program for years. I don't remember exactly every single thing because I don't use every single thing all the time. But if I put the cursor over it and leave it there, it will give me a nice little um, description of what that tool is and what it does. And at times it can sometimes give me more information on uh, shortcuts and things like that. So anytime uh, something important you could see, oh, this is where that file is and what its name is. Uh, what would I use the fill for? Oh, that's why I would use the fill. So we can see some of these. And so if I click on any of these tools, we see, just like I said earlier, in the properties, it gives me what the uh, properties of that. Is it using a stamp inside of that brush tool? These are considered brushes, brush tools. And is it spacing it out? you know all of these things um, the only thing I'm going to say before you know I'm gonna save how we sculpt for the next video 
but what you want to make sure of is just switching the mirror to X in most cases because you want to be able to sculpt one side and do it identical on the other side. Um, and then to the right, the last set of tools, which is basically you have, or uh, tabs, is stamp, stencil, fall off, material presets, lighting presets, and bookmarks. So the stamp, these are uh, images, and some of them are three-dimensional images, actually, uh, that go inside of the brushes. So what this allows me to do, I can either put this in the sculpting brushes or the paint brushes, and I can either paint these as textures or I can use them to paint in uh, patterns, zippers, pores on skin, uh, corrosion on cement that's older, metal chips, um, the details of a tree bark, all of those things I could use and it'll actually sculpt those out if my model is dense enough. Uh, or if I'm using a bump layer which will in the painting which we'll talk about later. Um, and these are the properties of this is the stamp and how it would actually use that stamp. So these are all the stamps I can use. Stencils are for uh, projection. So when I actually would turn these on it's not actually stamping uh, along the surface, it's projecting along the surface and it allows me to actually uh, paint, ooh look at that, that, that texture in. The reason it's showing all funky is because it's not subdivided enough. We're not going to get into that just yet, but as soon as I subdivide it you would see those details much higher. Fall off is uh, just like in Photoshop, it's sort of that softness and how the edge of the brush would actually work. So with fall off, what you would have is essentially a brush. Do I want it to be flat shaped? Do I want it to be really hard edged? How do I want it to fall off from the center? And this is the brush here. Uh, it should be noted, the shortcuts for the brush is the letter B, holding that down and left mouse button moving the mouse left to right changes the brush size and the letter M as in Mary uh, moving that changes the pressure if the pressure the longer the line the more the pressure so if that's too high he's he he's got a condition so we're just gonna control Z and then if I actually hold down M and turn that down oh that's so much better much nicer have more control that way or you could go the Popeye route and just build them out down here. So, material presets would be with that model, um, what sort of material do I want to start off with? What's going to work for my base material? This is the default. The reason why these are important is because you might find that um, maybe he has some metallic armor and I'm going to want the possibility of reflections on it. So I would pick a material like this for that piece or for that accoutrement or even for him if he's, you know, if he does have uh, shiny areas and then I can mask out where he's shiny and what color and affect those. Um, so basically these are just base materials to start you off on what this guy is. And then your lighting presets are preset lights that will allow you to change um, how he's illuminated. And this, it doesn't seem like it's that important now, but when you start texturing skin and stuff like that, you want to see what he's really going to look like. And a generic light sometimes does not give you a good representation of that. And then last but not least is the bookmarks, where if I say, wow, I always want to, like, I'm focusing for the next day or so on his face. So every, I don't want to just have to keep on going. I can just make a bookmark, add camera bookmark there, call it face. And then if I'm working uh, like on his feet or something and say, oh, you know what, I forgot I was supposed to finish his face, click, and now I am back uh, uh, focused on that. And that's basically the interface, and we're, it's kind of a, you know, blasting through it, but the whole idea is right now not to know what every single one of these tools and everything is, but just where things are, and generally speaking, what these different sections are. 
and on our next video we will start to actually uh, do some basic modeling and talk about modeling concepts.